So you are looking to create staircases in your Revit project model. Well, in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to model staircases in Revit. Not only will I be showing you how to make staircases, I'll also be sharing the key principles as it regards to staircase modeling in Revit. I'll be sharing tips and tricks, including how to connect your concrete staircase to your concrete floor so you can level up your Revit workflow and have your work look more mature and professional. So without any further ado, let's get started. Hey, what's up? It's not a Jecho code with Simple or Difficult. We draw videos like this every week where we teach you software so you can level up your workflow and also improve productivity in your workplace. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. When adding stair element to your project, it is easiest to work in a plan view. Okay, so to begin, let's go ahead and select the stair tool on the architecture tab of the river. Then on the properties palette, we will specify the base and the top levels of the stairs. This is an important step because the number of the risers of the stairs is automatically calculated based on the difference in height between these two levels and on the calculation rules that the stair type is set to. Speaking of stair calculation rules, let's talk about that. The calculation rules are a set of parameters that can be found inside the type parameters of any staircase family type. These parameters help you specify the values of minimum tread depth um, and maximum riser height. You can input these values based on the statutory planning guidance for the area where the building is to be built. Okay. I'll go ahead and set the maximum height to 150 mm. You can set yours to whatever value you want. Remember I told you it is based on planning guidance of the building area. Okay, for the minimum thread depth, I will make that 300 millimeters. As we proceed, I will show you the importance of these values we are adding. Okay, for now, leave the run width as it is. Okay, it controls the width of the staircase. Okay, that's all we need to set for now. Hit the OK button to save the values and exit this dialog box. Alright, back to the ribbon. Notice that the straight run tool is selected on the components panel. When you use this tool to draw stair runs, the lines for the boundary and the risers are automatically generated. On the options bar, set the location line of the stair related to the sketched line. Let's use the run left because we'll be using these walls to define the left edge of the stair. Now here is the actual run width. Okay, we have seen this before in the stair type, okay, but we decided to leave it at its walls then. But now let's make it one two. Like I said, it controls the width of the staircase. Alright, before we start creating the staircase, let's go over to the dimensions of the staircase to ensure that all is in order. Okay, so you will see the desired numbers of staircase. Okay, if I should go ahead and change it to 20. Now you remember the calculation rules we set in the type parameters of this staircase a while ago. Yeah, uh, Revit is trying to remind us and warn us that we are exceeding the maximum riser height that we specified in the stair. That means we either do something to correct it or we ignore the warning. This is a warning. Mind you, this is a warning, not an error. So that means if I click yes right now, Revit will leave my desired number of risers at 20. Whereas if I had clicked cancel, it would have reverted back okay, to the 21 that was there before. Let's also add 300 mm as our actual thread depth as per the calculation rules we entered. Okay, we all know why it is important. Alright, let's go ahead and create the stairs now. Let me just you know quickly type in 22 in here and we are good to go. Now click to enter the starting point of the stair run. 
After you click the starting point, a rectangle displays, representing the extent of the stair run. Now on the side, as you move the cursor along the run, the display continuously updates you know, to show the number of risers created and the number of risers remaining. I mean, how cool is that? So I will go halfway and click once, then come over here and click. Revit automatically adds a landing for me, connecting the two stair runs just like we want it to. Okay, so you see the rectangles are back again and the display is still showing the numbers of stairs. Okay, once you move the cursor beyond the extent of the rectangle, click to specify the end point. Okay, all the calculated risers are created. Oh yeah, click the finish edit mode tool to create the stair run. This is for dog leg stair. The same principle can be used to create a straight run staircase. Okay, or L shaped staircase. Okay. Uh, that has a landing in between just like this one. All right. All right As for railings railings are automatically generated and attached to the stair. However, we need to add a railing to the first floor level Okay, so the first floor plan is opened from the project browser Additional railings can be added using the railing tool which can be found in architecture tab of the ribbon okay we will use the pick line tool on the draw panel in drawing the railing along with an offset which you can specify on the options bar okay let's select the railing type from the type selector on the properties palette the offset tool allows you to use the edge of the floor as a layout guide for the railing sketch all right Select the flat roof and use temporary hide or isolate in the view control bar to temporarily hide the roof so you can see the railing. Alright, select the railing on the stair along the wall and use the type selector to change it to wall mounted rail. I will attach a link in the description so you can download and follow along. Now, there is an issue I'd like for us to solve. And what is this issue? Let's go over to the section. This thing here. Alright, here is a way I get around it. Alright. Select the staircase. Click on Edit. On the Components panel, click on Landing. Now, here is the thing. If we add this landing just a little bit right in front of the last thread, let's say we make it 300 millimeter, like so. Okay, it might, and then we hit we Let's get rid of this railing over here using the split tool. Select the split tool from the ribbon and then click on the railings and then select it and delete it. Also, edit the floor to shape of the landing. Select don't attach. It might seem as though our problem is solved, but look on plan and sections. There is this line that we really do not want for it to be there. Mostly because it might bring about confusion during construction because as we all know in architecture every single line means something as you can see the thickness of our landing does not match that of the floor let's fix all that all right now a way you can try and solve this thing is you can try and use the line work tool in the view panel of the modify tab and then set the line style to invisible line and then click on the edges of the landing like so that has hidden the landing but then the landing has a concrete pattern and this concrete pattern does not match our floor pattern at all. 
actually our floor has no pattern so that means you have to select this there click on edit staircase because you want to edit the landing then select the landing over here on the properties palette hit the edit type button to bring out the landing type parameters now you want to go to the materials and finishes section click on the value then click on the three horizontal dot right beside it to open the material browser the next thing you want to do is duplicate the material because you don't want this change to affect other elements that might have this same material applied to them okay make sure you rename the materials correctly you can name it i'm going to name it the landing material <laughs> okay make sure you are on the graphics tab then click on the surface pattern and then ensure that it is set to none if there is a pattern applied oh sorry if there is a background pattern applied to change it to none as well please note that if we had a pattern on the floor we would have matched the same pattern here instead of changing everything to none but then in this case there is no pattern so leave it at none all right click ok to exit the material editor now let's edit the landing and change it to 150 so that it will match the thickness of our floor slab okay click ok again to exit the type parameter now click the green check mark to finish the edit mode now let's go over to the section and have a look uh, let's quickly use line work here also to hide this line all right now <laughs> almost that is a long process all to correct one thing mind you if you have duplicates of of this same floor plan let's say you have the annotation plan you have other plans also to show different things you will still have to visit all of them and use line works on them that's a lot of work well the good news is i have a simpler method this method with fewer steps you get the same result if not better all right first thing we need to do we need to get rid of the floor in this entire area to do that you have to edit the floor select the floor and edit it like so if you want to know how to properly edit an art floor to your project please check it out on the card above okay then select the staircase let's double click on the landing to go into landing sketch mode okay use the landing to replace the floor we just edited out now select the landing on the properties palette click on edit type our floor is 150 millimeter thick okay so we'll go ahead and type in 150 for the thickness now all we need to do here is uncheck same as run and then uncheck the thread okay hit the ok button to exit the dialog box then finish the edit mode let's go to the section all right now take a look at what we have here all right also on the 3d view here is what we have okay now you choose which method is better for you both of them works but to me i feel like one is more work than the other select the railing on the stair along the wall and use the type selector to change it to wall mountain rail all right that is it for this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it if you did please give us a like and if you are new to this channel please consider subscribing not only that ring that bell so you don't miss any of our future tutorials Thank you for watching. I will see you in my next video.